Hello, this is a quick video for those who might be quite new to WordPress. This is a common situation. You get a new theme and you go to work in the customizer using the themes options there to lay out and style your site only to discover later down the line. You might have been better off using a child theme and I'll talk about when that's appropriate in a moment. But the problem with that is that if you do move to a child theme, you will lose all of your customizer settings unless you use a great free plugin from the repository called Customizer Export Import. It's by the Beaver Builder team and it does exactly what you'd expect. It allows you to export those settings to your local computer and then re-import them again. There are a few little caveats with this. It won't, because of the nature of WordPress, save things like your site title and your WordPress widgets. And also it won't work on something like theme test drive plugin. It needs to have an active theme that's installed. Let me show you what this looks like on the Beaver Builder theme because it's slightly different there that it's already included in the customizer. What you need to do is to go and click on that and you can install and activate that from the customizer. If you're using another theme, let me go over there. You'll just need to get it from the WordPress repository in the usual way. And as you can see, I've already installed it here and this is what it looks like it adds the same as what's in the beaver builder theme this section and obviously it's activated so we can now see the options and there we are we can export and we can also save any images that the customizer has allowed you to upload so that will be set by the theme and then you can re-import that. And of course, you might want to go the other way around. You actually might want to go from a child theme to the parent theme. So let me just quickly talk about when you might need to use a child theme. So what a child theme does is allow you to modify the theme and sometimes plugins without this being overwritten on updates. But it is arguable when you should use it. For example, you could add custom CSS to your themes customizer without that being overwritten. Or you could use something like the excellent code snippets plugin if you need to add functionality, which is typically added to your functions PHP file. So it's not always needed. And perhaps these days with page builders, there's less need to do custom CSS. Personally, I use a child theme by default because 90% of the time I will be making my CSS changes in the child theme styles.css file. I do it there because I prefer a separate file for all of my CSS over it being printed onto the source code of every page because not all of that CSS is going to be relevant. Also, I like more space for allowing for my own notes. But also there's a good many times where I will need a child theme to modify something in a plugin. So a recent example for me has been wanting to change the order email templates that are used in WooCommerce. So my preference is generally to start with it. And if not, I could easily move the other way around. If I know that I'm not gonna use that child theme, I could move all my settings to the parent get rid of the child theme and potentially there, although I think it's likely to be imperceivable, there could be an improvement on performance because it doesn't need to go and search in your child directory. Anyway, I think that's all I need to say on this. I hope this has been useful. If it has, as always, then please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks very much for listening to me. I hope you have a great day and hope to talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.